Hi everyone, this video is going to walk you through how to plate your cells on Petri dishes. So I have here a homemade Petri dish. Since I'm at home, I don't have the chemicals, so I made my Petri dish using Jello, but it's a very similar texture. So we have our homemade Petri dish. We have sterile loops and we have parafilm and you'll have all of these supplies on your lab bench. So after your incubation for a half hour, the cells will hopefully start to express um, the antibiotic resistance gene if they contain the plasma that has that antibiotic resistance gene. So basically we gave the cells a half hour to recover and start to express the antibiotic resistance gene. So the, the final step is to plate them on our Petri plate. Now the Petri plate contains media, which is basically all of the nutrients that the cells need to grow. Um, there's um, sugars, uh, protein source, and there's also auger, which is a solidifying agent. Um, auger and agarose are very similar. We use agarose when we made the gels. Agarose is basically a purified form of auger. Um, so this is a, a semi-solid, it's a gel-like material, very similar in texture to the gels when we ran agarose gels at the be beginning of the semester. Now the Petri dish, we wanna keep sterile. So there's a lid on the top. And when we work with it, we take the lid off, but when we're not using it, put the lid back on because the only thing we want to grow on the auger are our cells that we want to be growing them. We don't want things falling from the air onto the dish. So keep it covered at all times, unless you're actively working with it. Same thing goes for the sterile loops. So once I take this out, don't set it on your bench because it's gonna pick up bacteria from the bench. Don't wave it around in the air, keep it sterile, which means you take it out only when you want to use it and you only and you use it right away you don't set it anywhere else okay so what you'll do is you'll um, use your micropipe pet to measure the, the volume of liquid that you want to add to the plate and i believe this year i recommended that you add 75 microliters of your culture to the plate so you'll take the lid off you'll take your micropipe pet i don't have one of those at home but you're, you're going to add your 75 microliters and then you put the lid right back on Okay. Now, once you add the liquid, the next thing you're going to do is spread it around the plate. So I'm going to show us how that is done. So I have my bag of loops and I'm going to carefully just reach in the end of the bag and pull out one of the loops. Okay. Again, one of the key things is I want to make sure that I don't touch this loop to anything else. We want to keep it sterile. Okay. So I'm going to take the lid off my plate and I'll hold it up just so you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is gently move the loop back and forth on the surface of the plate to spread the liquid around. I didn't even add any liquid on there, but you can see how I'm doing that. You don't want to puncture the gel because then you're going to mess it up and you'll have big clumps of stuff all around it. So the, the key is to go very gently on the surface of the plate to spread your cells around. What you might want to do is turn it at one point so that you can spread it kind of in all directions as you're going through the plate. But do it very gently. Do not mush down and stab the auger. Now, as soon as I'm done spreading, I want to, again, immediately put that lid back on the plate to keep it sterile. There'll be, um, these loops will go in the autoclave back at the front of the, the room, and then your plate. Um, you, you'll probably want to give it a few minutes to um, allow all the liquid to fully soak in, and then these get incubated. Okay, now, as you can see, it's easy for the lid to come off. So we also want to do something before we incubate it to keep the lid on tight. Okay. Um, actually, hopefully before this step, you've also labeled the bottom of your place. So you put your name, the date, whether it's sample A, B, or C, so that two days from now you can remember what's on your plate. Um, so you have it nicely labeled, you have the lid on it. Last thing we're going to do is seal the edges with a piece of parafilm. So on your bench are going to be these strips of parafilm. This is really fun to use. It's, it's kind of like sticky saran wrap. Um, so there's there's a peel on, it's kind of like a sticker. So you have to peel the, the parafilm off of the, the paper, again, just like a sticker. And then what you do is you take that and I'm gonna attach it to the side of the plate and then just pull it around. And what that does is it keeps the lid from falling off. So you're gonna pull it and you'll see it stretches as you do that, pull it the whole way around. And now my lid is on nice and secure. When we incubate plates, we put it so that the um, media part is up. That prevents condensation or droplets of water from forming on the auger, just it makes the end results look pretty. So you'll flip your plate upside down, put it in the, um, 
the white container that's gonna be on the front TA bench. And then at the end of class, um, your TA and Joan will put this in an incubator in the back row. These need to incubate for about 24 hours to give time for the colonies to grow. So, so again, it takes about a full day for the colonies to grow. So clearly it looks clear here. Um, but the hope is that in 24 hours, some of your plates will have colonies on them. So at that point, um, Joan is going to take them out of the incubator for you and then place them on a table in the hallway outside of lab room 91. It's kind of around the corner from 91. It's not immediately outside of 91, so look around. Um, but there will be a table slightly past 91 in the hallway area. So she'll put them out 24 hours later and they'll be out there for another 24 hours. So as an example, if you're a Monday lab student, she's gonna put them out on Tuesday afternoon and they'll be there until Wednesday afternoon. So come back to look at your plate, record the results and take a picture of it as well. Um, she'll also have two colors of um, construction paper there. Sometimes depending on the color of the colonies, it's easier to place the plate on a white piece of paper. Um, so you can just have a piece of white paper sitting on the table, put your plate on it and then take a picture. That's usually helpful if the colonies are blue and they'll show up nice in the white background. Um, she'll probably have a piece of black construction paper there too, so that if you have white colonies, they'll show up nicely on the dark black background. But anyway, take a picture, share it with everyone in your group, compile all the results for your room. And with those results, hopefully you'll be able to figure out what samples A, B, and C are. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck with your plating.